Hi guys, welcome back for a new video. I hope you are doing well. Most of you who clicked on this video know our trusted friends who keep our aviaries clean and are super cute. We're talking about quills. And in this case, Chinese button quills, Chinese painted quills, or king quills, they go by many names. These quills give some more color and light in your aviary, especially at the bottom. That's why I decided to make a video about the different color variations available. During the last couple of years, I've had many different quills in different colors. Last month, I also rescued some quills again, which were in bad conditions and in a super small gauge together in a pet store. Together with the awesome colors we had as chicks this year, I got a nice collection of colors I can show you. Comment below which you like the most. We start with the wild colored quills. These are the original color of these quills and how they occur in the wild. Nowadays it's difficult to find a truly wild color in our hobby. The natural color of the male is dark brown with a blue gray breast and a dark rust colored to chestnut red belly. They have a black throat patch surrounded by a white band and bordered by a black stripe and a black eye stripe. The female does not retain the blue-grey breast, dark rust to chestnut red belly or the blue markings of the male. She has an overall brown color with rust brown abdomen and breast. Both males and females have black beaks, yellow to orange colored legs and feet and a short dark brown tail. Due to some mutations in the DNA, a lot of different colors have been created in our hobby. I will try to explain how this works in hopefully an understandable way. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is how I understand. The coat of feathers of a certain color is carried on a bird's gene. Due to a malfunction called a mutation, this gene can change, which changes the appearance of the bird, and thereby creating a new color by accident. By breeding these particular birds with different genetic coats, it's possible to have offspring in different colors. Then it's important to know that these colors can be recessive or dominant. This means that when a color is dominant, only one parent has to pass on this particular color gene and it's always shown no matter what the other parent passes on. In this example, we have a male quill with a dominant wild color and a female with a recessive white color. All the offspring will have the wild color because that's the dominant color gene. If indeed the other parent passes on another color which is recessive, in this case the white color, the offspring will visually don't show the recessive color but does carry this color making it possible to keep passing this recessive color on to his or her offspring throughout generations. This is shown by the lowercase a. A recessive color means that either parents can pass on their colored genes to any of their offspring but only those that inherit the same color gene from both parents will be visually this color. So if this quail from the previous example breeds with a partner who is also not showing but indeed carrying that gene, again shown with the lowercase a, it's possible that their offspring can have a recessive color. However, note that it could also be that the offspring is still wild colored only carrying the gene and even only carrying the dominant gene. The last male in this example can't have any white offspring because he's not carrying the white genes anymore. He only inherited the dominant wild genes from both parents. I hope this makes a little sense. Last you also have sex links. That's to say that the sex of the bird will be a determining factor as to whether or not it has the ability to inherit or pass on the gene. These are the two main rules to know when trying to breed particular colors. However, more variables could also affect their colors and sometimes a combination of colors is created so neither is dominant over the other. When you have a mutation affecting the color, you also always have to be careful. Due to mutations, the gene for the color has changed, but there's a good possibility other genes have also been changed, affecting maybe their health or other important things in the bird's life. In nature, these birds will not survive, and only the best genes will survive, keeping the population healthy. In our hobby, we will do anything to keep them alive. That's why birds with mutations are most often more difficult to keep and breed, just because next to their color, 
other things in their genes have changed, which are not beneficial for the birds. Overbreeding with these birds can cause a less healthy population. Constant inbreeding that knowingly or unknowingly happens when bloodlines are limited will even increase the process of creating an unhealthy population. However, some mutations are well established nowadays, but it's always wise to breed with birds from different breeders to keep the gene pool diverse. In the last couple of years, I've got some amazing color mutations, some of which I even didn't know the parents were carrying that particular recessive gene. Throughout the video, you could already see some color mutations. Here are all the color mutations I've had in the past. Some color mutations are already visible when the chicks hatch, others are only visible in their adult plumage. I also got some pictures and videos of some nice looking quills from some of my viewers, so thank you for that. That's it for now, hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment below what your favorite mutation is and if you're down there click that like button and if you're not already consider subscribing for more bird and quail related videos. See you in the next video and remember to stay happy and always love your birds. Bye bye!